five, four, three, three. two, one. Good. More. You oh man, I mean, where's the mic? Too long. Well, this mic's not even on. See, you're not even prepared. Hello, can you hear me? Where's my mic? It doesn't work with this phone. Remember. Has to only have one mic for whatever reason. Boring. So guys, today is Thursday morning, Thursday night for us, Friday morning for you guys. We do these devotionals Monday through Friday. Sharon said I was talking too slow, so I just picked this thing up and we'll just do the whole devotional within like two minutes. Is that what you <laughs> want me to do? <laughs> no. You said I talk too slow. Stop it. Okay. Babe, you better just be normal. I need. Do you remember the sloth? Do you remember when we went to the DM? Hobby Lobby? Was it Hobby Lobby? Yes. Oh, yeah. We went to a Hobby Lobby, and this girl was just, she was going super duper slow. And I think we were literally at the cash register. We for just like got over an COVID. Hour. I thought I was going to pass out. Yeah, it was crazy, you guys. So, Wait, this is... we came and we talked about it here on the devotional. And I think Adam Miller sent us a video about um, about Zootopia. Zootopia. When about, they go in the DMV. Yeah, and it was about some sloths, and it was just so funny. And the little two characters go into DMV, and every DMV worker were sloths. <laughs> and, it, and it painted the picture ac accurately. It was like, yeah. it's just exactly what we went through. Yeah. yeah. But anyways. Yeah. Guys, did you like the song? Did I talk about it yesterday? I did, huh? But what, but the song I re put, yeah, I did talk about it yesterday. Mm -hmm. Why am I going to talk you about it again? You no, you talked about it during um, Bible study, I believe. I don't know. I, but yeah. a few videos back, a couple videos back from this, um, it's a song that I recorded out of an album I did in 2013. And it's one of those songs. And since we have so many new people, I re-uploaded it with the new website at the end. Because if you go back, back then, it has the old website that don't exist anymore. Mm. Anyways... So today somebody says, ooh, I like your hat. And he says, he goes, it pops. And I said, thank you. I said, yeah, we got to proclaim it. I love Jesus. He says, no, the flowers pop. And I said, no, you know what? Jesus pops. <laughs> when was this? When we were waiting at the restaurant. Uh, when I went back to the kitchen, one yeah. of the young men, he says, ooh, the flowers pop. And I said, no, Jesus pops. I go like that. <laughs> He better get it right. It says, I love Jesus. That's right. Tell me my flowers pop. Jesus is the one that rules. Try to tell me it's just the flowers. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> today's devotional is inspired by Pastor Joe. I mean, Brother Joe. <laughs> Um, he is somebody that I met over the phone because of Flacco, and I gave, he gave an amazing story on, I always forget the name of that website, uh, YouTube channel, Stories of a Current Prisoner? Of a Current Prisoner. Anyways, um, visited with him, and, uh, it was, um, broke it, bread with it him. It was his testimony, actually. Yeah, and we were able to share and sit for like two hours you know it and felt longer than that yeah yeah <laughs> yeah maybe it was you know time goes fast you know when you're having good conversation good fellowship but man in talking with him and just hearing his story um it inspired me to share this passage of scripture and i think it's important for a lot of you to hear you need to hear this guys you need to hear you. this. You, 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 and you, and you. Wait a minute. You too. Yeah. You too. You and you too. The little chubby bald one. You. Oh wait, I'm looking at myself. Sorry. Brother Jesus would be like, he's talking about me. Oh my God, we're dorky. What about me? Mm. Wait, what is that from? What about... Oh, from La Bamba. Oh. Yeah. Richie gets there. What about me? <laughs> yeah, so... Oh, my God. Um, 
You guys ready? Are you ready? Nobody said one comment about that little, when I turned yesterday's devotional gray with that creepy music. Nobody said nothing. That's there was creepy music? Yes. When you turned it gray? Yes. How come I didn't hear that? I don't know. Oh, because I was listening to it in silence yesterday. I was just watching. You know why? Because I ha uh, because you were sleeping and I I was just reading it. You know how you put the um the words The devotional? Yeah. You know how you put the caption? Yeah. So I was just reading everything. Oh. So, because you were still sleeping, I didn't want to wake you up, so I just put it the caption so I could just read everything. But I did see when I put, I showed them my blue shoe, you put a big old... Power. Like or, a power, bam, or something. I'm like, are you serious? Like... <laughs> here's, here's what He's I'm... He's a character, guys. Here's, here's what I'm concerned about. Is, is, I look at you sideways, the camera turns gray, I put creepy music... And nobody says nothing about it on a comment. You know what that leads me to believe? That leads me to believe. To believe. Y'all are weirdo, 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 weirdos. Well, you're not weirdos. letting. Me, you know, you're not letting me finish my thought. What? It lets me. It leads me <laughs> to believe that you think that's normal. Like I'm just weird for the fact that they didn't say nothing about it. Like, ah, uh, that's well, just then David. Well, I guess we're all weirdos. Nah, that's just David. Remember the other uh, devotional? It takes one to know one. Months ago, guys, I did, oh. a, I did a devotional. I can't remember what. I think I put an explosion or something. And Brother Sal, who works in elevators, was up high on an elevator with headphones. And the explosion came out of nowhere. <laughs> it scared him. Yeah. He's, we're lucky that you didn't fall off, brother. Seriously. Man, it's messed up. Seriously, seriously, seriously. All right. You guys ready? Serious? Serious? Serio? Okay. Serio pedo, andale. The, the, you, know, you know it's cr crazy? In Spanish, they say ser serio pedo. But in, in English, that's like serious fart. That's why I looked at you weird. Yeah, like why would somebody like, say serious fart in okay, English? Okay, okay, okay. Like, it's weird. All right, guys. Uh, we're going to 1 Corinthians. 26 to 31, right? Chapter 1, 26 to 31. 1 Corinthians, chapter 1, 26 to 31. You guys ready? You ready? I'm ready. Okay. Let's do this. Check this out, guys. Seriously, all, all joking aside, this is really um, a, a very powerful and heavy passage. It says, um, so remember, again, this is Paul writing to the church in Corinth. And he says, For you see your calling, brethren. You see your calling, brethren. That not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chose the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty and the base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen and the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. That, as it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. Amen. Okay, so I'll be reading out of the message. David reads out of the New King James. Take a good look, friends, at who you were when you got called into this life. I don't see many of the brightest and the best among you. Not many influential, not many from high society families. Isn't it obvious that God deliberately chose men and women that the culture overlooks and exploits and abuses, chose these nobodies to expose the hollow pretensions of the somebodies. Ooh. That makes it quite clear that none of you can get by with blowing our own horn, horn before God. Everything that we have, right thinking and right living, a clean slate and a fresh start, comes from God by way of Jesus Christ. That's why... We have the saying, if you're going to blow a horn, 
blow a trumpet for God. Okay, that was 26 to 31, but there's three verses that I really, guys, that this is so powerful to so many of you guys. This is an understanding. I read this while in solitary confinement, and this broke me because I felt so rejected, so thrown away, so forgotten, so shattered. You know, and I'm like, I ruined my life. I ruined the life of my children. What am I ever going to be good for? By the time I get out, you know, life is going to pass me by. Uh, all kinds of little tiny violins playing just for me. You know, and some of you, maybe it wasn't prison. Maybe it was something that happened to you. Maybe something that made you feel rejected and despised. That you have been, that you feel like you've been thrown away. Shame, condemnation. Yeah. So I love the fact that he starts this off, man. He says, you, you know your calling, right? That's yeah. what he says. How does it say the very it first? It says, take a good look, friends, at who you were when you were called into this life. Yeah. So he's like, reflect. He goes, I want you to reflect on where you came from. Yeah. He goes, you, you, you know you were called. He says, according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. So he's like, man, just because, um, how does it word it here? It says, I don't see many of the brightest and the best among you. Yeah, right there. Not many influential. See, I mean, maybe some, some churches are filled with people that have prestigious awards, accolades, degrees in their walls. Um, Come from money, from high yeah. society. But I have a feeling um, you're probably, that's probably not you. I mean, we're just regular folk, regular people. Um, and that's Our, all right. You know, from hardworking parents yeah, to, you that, know. That, that's okay. You know what I mean? Some of you are struggling. Yeah. You're not even sure it's the first. And you're just like, man, how am I going to pay this phone bill? Yeah. Um, some of you are concerned about your rent. Some of you are concerned, you know, we're just regular people, man, living a regular life. That, and, and here's where we find comfort because he is saying that, um, hey, maybe, maybe you're not mighty. Maybe you're not noble. Um, but it says not many of those are called anyways. So you'd be like, man, why? In the world, right, don't corporations like Microsoft, Facebook, like they literally go into universities and you pick the, the, the cream of the crop. Yeah. They go in there specifically. They go in recruiting. They have, recruiting. They have recruiting teams, actually. Yeah. They want, if you have high grades, boom, they swoop you before you even get your degree in your hand. I was a recruiter, guys. I would actually go out there and cold recruit. I would go head hunting. That's what we call Dang. it. We call it head hunting, guys. For your body? No, babe, not oh. for my vario. Okay. I was, I would do life insurance, guys. I would yeah. do, um, I would actually go out there and go head hunting. So the schools, I mean, I mean, these big corporations, guys. We live close to the Silicon Valley. That's where multi-million dollar Facebook, everything that you're watching, YouTube is close by. Facebook, I mean, you name it, uh, Adobe, uh, Google. I mean, it's a drive down the freeway. These guys look for the cream of the crop. They look for the noble. They look for the mighty. And, but here's the thing about God. He's like, no, nah, I ain't looking for that. And this is the part that, this, I, uh, guys, you got to understand. My Bible, when I would read it in my cell, was like God talking to me. There's verses I would laugh at. There's verses I would just weep. Because I literally felt like he wrote it to me. And look what he says. So God doesn't call the noble, he doesn't call the mighty, he says, and he says, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world. Have you ever felt foolish? Mm -hmm. Raise your hand. I literally, my third time being arrested, I was in the cell and I'm like, I'm the biggest fool of the world. What am I doing? I am a fool. Like literally I thought that. Yeah. Like, I'm so stupid. And then I read this, and it says, God has chosen the foolish things of the world. That That's crazy enough. Yeah. But the sentence ain't done. It's crazy enough. I'm like, God, you, I'm, <laughs> if you chose the foolish, then that means you've chosen me. Yeah. That means he's chosen you. But look at the rest of the sentence. 
God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. That blew me away. God, so you are not like um, Facebook and Google? You don't go for the cream of the crop? And the Lord says, no. I look for the ones that fell through the cracks. He goes, and I look for the ones that fell through the cracks and I choose them because I will put to shame those that think they're better than others. And then it goes on, it says, And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things that are mighty. And, and I, I love that because as men, we're like, well, we're not weak. We, we might be foolish, but you don't understand that there's a lot of sisters. There's a lot of, a lot of women that have felt weakened by relationships, by life, by things that have happened to them. By and, men. And by men. And they feel weak. They feel broken. And how does that make you feel, babe, when it says that he will choose the weak things of the world to put to shame those which are mighty? Mm, then that means I'm mighty. Well, no, he's going to put to shame those that are mighty. No, oh, but that means I'm going to be somebody. He's making somebody out of that me. That means he chose you. Yeah. And, and it's crazy. Cra and he chose, he chose the foolish. Thing. And the weak. Yeah. He chose because that's the way I was feeling out in the world. I felt, I I, I felt like I was mope, moping around, feeling like I I had nothing. I felt shame. No strength. I felt condemnation. I felt no strength. I felt like nobody, you know, out there. I felt like all of that had been stripped away from me. You but know? it's interesting the word weak. Yeah. When somebody is weak, right? Like. Um, but I but I but I actually you just said that. But I actually do feel mighty, though. I do feel yeah. that strength. I do feel like he's given me No, that. no, I, yeah, I mean, he so, does. But I'm so. just saying, you know, what he was saying here. But yeah, yeah he does. Yeah, on contrary to what you yeah, were saying. Yeah, because then it I flips do it. Feel all, I do yeah. feel all of that. I feel like he's made me that mighty woman of God. You know, he's yeah. made me that, that woman yeah. that I've always wanted to be. Yeah. I think I say that all the time, that, that reflection. I'm like, thank you, Lord, for making me today the woman I prayed for mm -hmm. yesterday. Yeah. You know? Well, because I was going to bring that up, but since you brought it up, I'll, I'll say it now, is that he chooses the the foolish and he chooses the weak um, to confound the wise and to, um, and to put to shame the things that, that are mighty. But here's the one thing, and I'm, I'm, since you said it, I'm going to say it, is that that doesn't mean you stay there. Yeah. When you come into Christ, you do not stay weak. When you come to Christ, you do not stay broken. When you come to Christ, you do not stay foolish. Yeah. You are the weak and you bring down the mighty. Therefore, it makes you mighty. You know, yes. so I know that's where you were going, you know, and, and um, but in the beginning, guys, God chose you in your foolishness. He chose you in your weakness to put to shame those things which are mighty. Yeah, absolutely. And verse 28, and the base things of the world. And the things which are despised, God has chosen. All that stuff, man, the world has turned its back on you. Maybe your family has turned its back on you. Maybe maybe you have a huge file of all these, of your jail record and everything. And, and because of that, you can't even get certain jobs. You can't even get certain housing. I remember uh, Brother Tony uh, Paleo said that when he went to Arizona, they wouldn't even give him an apartment because he had a felony. You know, he no, and, and he couldn't even open a bank account. That's what it was. He couldn't even get a bank account because he had a... What are you supposed to do? It's almost like a system created for you to go back to prison then. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and it's like the world despises you, hates you. And, and, and but yet God is going to make it says that he will bring to... And the things which are not, things that are, that are nothing to bring to nothing the things that are. That he's about to take you and, and make you into somebody. Make you into a mighty man of God. Make you into a mighty woman, a woman of God. You know, and this is a powerful passage. Yeah. I remember that, that that was a feeling that I had as well. And I, and I remember that it was a stronghold because I felt like when, after having my brain surgery, the first one um, back in 2012, um, you know, when when I when I had the first brain surgery and I started going through all my medical stuff and everything and then I moved over here, um, I had applied um, for member section eight mm -hmm. and everything, 
and they approved me for it guys you know and you know I remember they gave me that section eight when I moved over here and they said that I needed to find a place over here and I ended up finding a, a little two bedroom a really run down two bedroom it was really really um not the best place you know and um I remember that we in order for me to when you moved in with me and everything when we um, got married yeah when we got married um gotta say you, those things because then you you guys uh, yeah some of you might run with that yeah when when we got married and then he moved in after we got married um he was like no we gotta get out of here we need to find a, a better place and he ended up finding this house that we're at now and everything and um you know i think it was time i said lord you know if if you if you find a place if you open up the doors and i'll let this this go because i don't want to be held by the system i don't want to be held down by any of this you know and it was time so the, the the lord did open up the doors for us to to have this place and and i let it go i went by faith and i said okay lord i'm, I'm gonna let it go um so after that last brain surgery that was it i didn't need it and i let it go and the Lord opened up the doors for us to be here. Mm -hmm. And so I let go of it, you know, um, but I was grateful for the for the time for the two years that I had the, the section eight, you know, while I was down here and while I went through the brain surgery and everything. And, you know, it, it was it was just for that time. But, you know, sometimes, you know, the system is built to keep us crippled sometimes, yeah. you know, and and that's what I didn't want. I felt free the moment that I mm -hmm. did let it go. I felt like the blessings, you know, I just felt like, Lord, I put my trust in him. And I just felt like by putting my trust in him, the doors opened up and I just felt free. I felt like I felt like I can breathe because yeah. I felt like I was being limited. I was being limited and being told the places that I can go. I can only mm -hmm. choose by being told that i can that i had to be in the bad areas by being yeah. on on that on that housing you know and they were saying well you can only choose in these areas and the areas that they were asking me to choose were areas where i knew that were not safe for my boys yeah and and you know when that scared me because putting my boys in that, that area could have really opened up you know a place where my boys can possibly you know get hurt or get involved in gangs and stuff like mm -hmm. that so I don't know. I just, you know, for me, I just said, Lord, you know, he started to show me all of that. And I said, you know what? I made the right choice. Yeah. Yeah. You know, guys, <clears throat> I was talking to Joe today. And he was sharing with us, but his life, some rough stuff. You know, some of the stuff, guys, let, let's be honest. A lot of the stuff that we go through is by our own choices. We can't yeah. sit here. We, we, You know, we put ourselves in prison. I put myself in prison. Nobody else did, you know, and, and whatnot. But sometimes there's injustices that are done, and uh, and it breaks us. And whether we show it or not, it breaks, it breaks a part of us. It breaks our spirit. And these verses are here because it's to let you know that it doesn't matter if your life is shattered into a million pieces. The Lord never says, yeah, I can't put that one together. I'll move on to somebody else that ain't mm -hmm. so broken. The Bible says there's nothing impossible for God. Matter of fact, he likes the more broken you are, the more of a challenge, and he will show you. Yeah. And he will show the world he that he can take every together. little piece together and he will show the world, look what I've done. Yeah, absolutely. Because if we read the next verse, look what it says in the next verse, guys. It says this. So after saying all these things, why? so you would think, like, why does God choose the despised? Why does God choose the foolish? Why does God, why? It says it right here. This is why. It says that no flesh should glory in his presence. Hmm. That means you don't get to toot your own horn. Mm -hmm. You know what that means? <laughs> when everybody sees what God has done in your life, you will never be able to say, I did this on my own. You will always give God the glory. Yeah. I did not understand my calling to preach, guys. I really, honest, I honest to God, I did not understand why God would call somebody that was sitting in federal prison. God, why are you choosing me? I'm the worst of the worst. Why would you choose me? 
And it's like the Lord said, exactly why I'm choosing you. And I didn't understand it, but I accepted it and I received it. I just let it, you know, and I started preaching in the yard in prison. But honestly, that question always lingered my whole time. My whole time I was inside. I'm like, God, there are so many people out there that are so much more intellectual than I, so much more educated. They weren't drug dealers. They weren't gangbangers. They weren't, you know what I mean? How many people have I destroyed with drugs? How many people? And, and really, like, you're going to choose me? You know, so I honestly, I pictured myself just not really doing much for the kingdom. Honestly, I'm being just honest with you. But I, I said, okay, God. I mean, Noah preached for a hundred some years and nobody else went in the boat but his family. So I just figured, okay, God, I'll be your Noah because ain't nobody going to hear me. It wasn't until I got out. And I was really excited to get out because I couldn't wait to join a church. I couldn't wait to hear a sermons that were going to just blow my socks off. I, could, I couldn't wait. And I came out. And I'm not saying every church. But I saw just a circus. Churches against other churches. Pastors. I mean, it was just a mess. And I'm like, Lord. What is going on out here? So many people are chasing money. So many preachers are chasing fame. So many preachers are chasing a big car and a big house. And, and like, God, what is going on? And he says, now do you understand why I called you? Now do you understand why I called the broken? Now do you understand why I called the foolish? Now do you understand I called the despised and the weak? Yeah. Because when I put you together, you will never leave me. Because you understand and know that you could never have put yourself back together again. You will always give me the glory. And I was like, all right, Lord, I get it. Now do you understand why it's so easy for me to, to sit in that front seat and be able to receive from you? Like when you're, when you're up there and, and you know, you're giving the word of God it's like I can receive from you. I know you're my husband, but when you're up there giving the word, it's like you're 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 not my husband. You know, you're my pastor. And I don't see you as my husband when you're up there. You know, it's like it's weird because it's like I, I really, really I'm like, wow Lord, you know, it's like I I don't understand, you know, I'm like how does how do you put those words in that man's mouth, you know? <laughs> I really just like, because I really, really, truly receive the words that he's giving you every single time because I, because I know it, David. I know that the Lord has given you so much because I know that you were not tainted by all all the circuits out here i know that you know and i think i told you that from the beginning i'm like it was just you in that bible and nothing else and i think a lot of people see that and i think but there's another burden growing in my heart that i haven't shared and and i've shared a little bit it, it's ever since covid ever since we got covid i'm like I felt that, like the Lord say, no more soldiers. I need you to build generals. And I'm like, Lord, but how, who am I to build a general? Well, I think you, and, we have and, shared that, though. You yeah, have. No, I said this part I have, but not the next part I'm about to say. I say, Lord, who am I to build up generals? I said, God, it takes a general to raise a general. And the Lord said, exactly, look in the mirror. What do you think I've made you? And, and, and I don't know how to receive that. I'm just being honest. I don't know how to receive. I'm like, God, I'm just a soldier. He goes, no, you're not. Stop denying what I'm calling you to do. Yeah, because I think you don't, you yeah. haven't seen that in yourself. And, and I think for me personally, I think when we, we went through that whole two months of being sick or that month and a half of being sick, I got really scared because for a moment I just, I just said, Lord, if something happens to him, who's gonna who's gonna preach like him? 
who's going to go up there and share that word? I need him to impart into someone else. I need him to start discipling other men, you know? I need him to raise up other men and to part, you know, start imparting what it, what is it? What's yeah. that word? Yeah, start imparting into other men or pouring in. Yeah, start pouring into them and and he needs to start, you know, pouring and pouring what you're pouring into him. He needs to pour into other men because I can't do it on my own. Yeah. I can't. And you know, and, and, and I think that that was a big burden for me because I kept thinking like, Lord, if something was to happen to him, I, I need I need him to pour into others so that so that he can raise them up and and, and they can learn, yeah. you know, and, and then vice versa. And I felt the same way, like, Lord, if something mm -hmm. happens to me, then I need to start pouring into other women, you know, the same. It's the same thing. Yeah. You know, when I, st we, I think we started to both feel that burden and yeah, started to feel yeah. that. You know, um, there's men at, at our church that I know they're waiting for the pouring. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to get there. I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out how to, how to make it happen and how to do it. So I, I know that there's a, a few select men that are at the church, physically, at the physical House of Rest Church. And they're just like, Pastor, I'm waiting. You know, but... Recently, God has put men in my life that God has shown me. And I, and I hold back when I talk to them because I don't want to scare them away. But there's been a handful of men where the Lord showed me. It's weird because I see it in their eyes. When I look in their eyes, I see a pastor. I see a leader. I see a general. And I try to tell them very constrained because I don't want to scare them. But... That is a huge burden because I'm like, oh my God, Lord, these are the generals that you're bringing my way. These are the ones, God, and if I tell them, they're going to run. Because if somebody would have told me the responsibilities on my shoulders now, I, I probably would have ran. Yeah. You know, and I'm just like, Lord, give me the words, give me the wisdom, you know. And here's the thing, just because that word has been given to them doesn't mean they, can, they, they don't have to choose it. Yeah, I almost did run. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't mean they have to choose it. Just because you're called, you know, it, it doesn't mean nothing. You can still walk away. Yeah. You know, many are called, the Bible says, and few are chosen. There's, there's elite. And, and it's crazy, right? Because a lot of them are ex-cons, okay? A lot of them. Not every one of them. But it just makes sense, right? Because God takes the broken. You know, and, and I want to say this real quick before it slips my mind uh, on how I want to say this, is that... I think it slipped my mind already. Wait, <laughs> wait. Um, I didn't even interrupt. I know, you. no, no. Just my mind is going a million. Okay, this is what I was going to say. I remember now. There's a lot of men that I have met incarcerated, and they, at least I'm talking about men that are from this area, Northern California. They were forced to be educated. They were forced to write essays. They were forced to read books. They were forced to learn languages. They were forced to do all of this stuff, and they did it so willingly. They did it with a fervency. They did it with a fire and a desire to, 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 for the betterment of our people. How much more? If God, your creator, the one that created you, not only that, but the God that died for you, mm. The God, the God that said, I will give everything for you. I will die for you so you can live for me. <laughs> That's heavy. And God is raising up leaders and he's looking for generals to say, I know you have it in you because I saw everything you did for the enemy. I saw all the studying, all the essays, all the reports, all this and all of that. Everything that you did for the enemy, will you not do it for me? Because I'm the one that died for you. I have called you by your name. And that's the burden I feel when God shows me these men. And, they're, and, and each one says, man, I hear what you're saying. And I'm just like, no, you don't. 
No, you don't, because if you did, you would fall on your face right now because the King of glory is calling you and has chosen you for such a time as this. And many people will be saved because if you take heed to this calling and you let it bury deep inside of your spirit, do you not understand that you will be a powerhouse for the kingdom of God? But yet I can't say that because it'll scare them. Yeah. And that's the burden I carry, guys. That's the burden I carry, man. And I don't know what to do with it because it's just getting stronger and stronger. And I feel like exploding. Yeah. But I think, you know, being scared is a, is a natural feeling. Look how many of the disciples, look how many, how many ran, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> many yeah. were scared, you know? Many were scared, but you know, our prayer, I, you know, my prayer and our prayer is that God himself reveal himself to each and every, each and every one of you. Um, and that the Lord, you know, speak to their hearts, you know, to each general, men and woman, you yeah. know, and um, that he reveal himself to you and that he speak to your heart. And that you rise up and that you answer the call. You know what I saw at the at the at the boxing match? Me being asked to pray. I saw a hunger in people for a leader. And I'm not saying I'm that one. I just saw the hunger. Where's the Martin Luther Kings of today? Where are the Cesar Chavez's of today? Yeah. Where are the great men and great women of today? Where are they at? Yeah. Maybe they're right here watching right now. But it's the leaders to, the triumphant leaders, not the leaders of destruction. Yeah. You know, there were so many leaders in 2020, but there were leaders that led to destruction, mm -hmm. that, you know, led to negativity, to destroy cities and to all of that stuff. That's that not brought a leader. Neg negativity. That's not the type of leaders that we're talking about. We're talking about leaders that are going to mm -hmm. lead people to, to things of encouragement, to things that, that are going to bring positive, mm -hmm. that are going to bring people to to salvation to success mm -hmm. you know to empower them to make them better people that are going to lead them to the kingdom you know um to eternal life you know yeah Th that are going to build a legacy for our children that are going to you know bring a legacy to our children's children you know and that is just going to continue on and on mm -hmm. and on and on that is going to man yeah that's that's what we're talking about. A true leader does not cause division. No. A true leader unites. But united under God. Yes. Not a unity of this world. Because the world will unite against those that believe in Jesus. But I'm saying unity in the name of in Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You know, so, all right, guys. I, I, I think uh, we said a lot. Uh, hopefully, I, I didn't sound like I was all over the place. No, um, I, think, I think it's it's wonderful. just a it's just a this is a real thing, man. God has called you for such a time as this. You were not born in the 1900s, 1700s, 1500s, or 500 years from now. He put you on this earth right here, right now, to be listening to this message because He called you for such a time as this. He has a kingdom, and he has people that he wins. That he, he needs to win over, and it's going to be impossible unless you do what you're called to do. <clears throat> there are people that are that are going to go to heaven or hell based based on what you do. <coughs> Let that settle. There are people that are going to go to hell or heaven because of the decisions you make. All right, guys. <coughs> Bye.